nice Bamboo Lab A1, but how does it compare to the P1P? Which one is better for the PLA? Let's find out. Hello, welcome to my tech farm. Bamboo Lab A1 is back. Why? I'll explain it later if you're not familiar with this. And this is the combo version, which means it rides with the AMS Unit 2. This is very fast bed slinger with print volume of 256 mm in X, Y and Z direction. This means the same print volume like those Core X, Y printers by Bamboo Lab, but also this means that we can use the same print surfaces. The speed is also the same, 500 mm per second, which is quite fast. Now the acceleration is 10,000 mm square, square seconds uh, compared to 20,000 on those Core X, Y printers. But the advantage of this we can see only with the smaller parts. The max temperatures on the nozzle 300 degrees Celsius, on the bed 100 degrees Celsius, which theoretically could be enough even for ABS or ASA filaments, but this is open Bensliger and uh, it is not even recommended to place it inside the enclosure, but we can still have some success with some smaller parts which are still heated by the heated bed around it. The gears are from hardened steel, but the nozzle is from the stainless steel, which is uh, harder compared to the brass nozzle. But if we want to print some carbon fiber materials too, in that case we have to replace it with hardened steel nozzle. But the replacing of the nozzle on this printer is extremely easy. Now, the early versions of A1 had the problem with the bed heating cable. And how Bamblab handled this problem is extremely nice and great example could be for other manufacturers. Because many times I already saw this kind of problems with the other brands. The problem that stereo leaf cable is missing, the bed tensioner is not correct, or, or maybe some uh, ventilation are not correct and, and similar. And when I contacted those companies, well, they told me that it's fixed in mass production, so new units will be corrected. But what are the existing units? So as I mentioned, so Bamboo Lab did this real correctly, and this should be a great example for many other brands too. Now, this is on the market more than half years now, and there are plenty of videos about it. So I was thinking, how can I make this uh, video interesting? So I decided that uh, I actually want to answer my questions. And that is that if I want to print PLA only, should I use this printer? And it should replace my P1P, because currently the P1P is the, my, my main printer for the PLA. So I want to compare some speeds, the quality, now, for the AMS unit, I believe that um, there is a chance that this will be faster because this AMS light has the shorter path when, we, when it pulls back the filament, but um, I will see this later. And I'm sure that this will be much quieter compared to the P1P, but we will find out that soon. So let's see what's in the box. As always, the packaging is great. The printer is very well protected in this foam. This is the base and it arrived with this two-sided texture PI sheet, which is my favorite print surface. And it is compatible with other Core X5 printers. On the front side we have the slot for the SD card which is already inserted and we can rotate the screen. This is the back side with power plug and the switch and this is that bed heating cable which was the reason for that uh, calling back and now this is the improved version. And this is the second main part, the bridge with the X Gen 3 with the extruder and the hot end nozzle. Everything is assembled, only we have to assemble these two things together. And this is the AMS unit with, with all our parts, some tools and spare parts and filament swatches. These are sample cards for different colors and materials. The AMS unit arrives with this stand, but uh, I will start using this one. Later I want to mount this AMS unit on the top of the printer, because in that case the footprint will be much smaller. The only thing I don't like with this package is that the sample filament arrives without the spool. Just shortly the assembling. First I have to remove these four screws, they are fixing the bed for the transportation. And then inserting the base inside the gentry. Removing some zip ties. Removing the cover plate because I have to fix the base to the gentry. And we have two screws on the front. Placing back the cover. And then connecting some cables, but they will be from the bottom. They are marked with different colors. This is the last one, the green. Do some cable management. And then back to vertical position. The screen. Nozzle cleaner. 
This is the spool holder, but I will not install it because I'm planning to install the AMS on the top in the future. And now assembling the AMS unit. Important to follow the colors, green on green, yellow on yellow. Connecting with some Teflon tubes, the longer one goes on the right side. Press down, insert the tube and it's locked. Similar on the other side. Two more cables, this is for the AMS and this for the power. The hardware assembling is finished, let's turn it on. Selecting the language and the region. Connecting with the Bamboo Handy application. And it will do some automatic calibration, this is the noise cancellation. And now the vibration compensation. And auto bed leveling. And this completely automatic calibration is finished, ready for printing. It found some updates, so it is updating the firmware and this is completely automatic. And what is nice about this AMS slide that it can accept carbon spools too. Before I start the printing I want to do one thing. I have to tell to the printer what is the filament in that fourth unit which was not recognized. And we can do this over the application or in the Bamboo Studio. But this is the most comfortable method. Clean in the bed with isopropyl alcohol. And of course the first printing will be the Benchy. Temporary poop bucket. <laughs> it started and I will measure the reprinting time. Nice progress after 9 minutes, uh, 5 minutes to go. 40 minutes 33 seconds. And I already know this textured PI sheet, it sticks very good until it's hot and I have to wait until it cools down. And when it completely cools down... Hmm. Okay. And this is almost perfect bench sheet. Great first layer, overhangs. And the only thing I notice here is uh, this window on the back side, it should be circle and it is not completely rounded. But it is better than for example this was printed on A1. And now I'll prepare the slides at the Bamboo Studio and next few objects will be printed on both printers, A1 and P1P, because I have to decide if this will be my main printer if I want to print PLA or I should say with the P1P. And I want to compare the printing time and the quality and well, maybe the noise and similar. The first object will be this smiling owl from the Thingiverse. And here you can see the settings for the P1P, printing time 1 hour and 12 minutes. And this is now settings for the A1, changing the filament. And this printing time will be 1 hour and 24 minutes because of the different acceleration. This is P1P and the noise from exactly half meter distance. Approximately 64 decibels. And this is A1 from exactly half meter distance. Approximately 50-51 decibels, so much quieter than P1P. Here you can see side by side two printers and P1P bed is static. And this is what can we see over the camera. So uh, we can see a frame every two seconds or something like that. But at least on P1P the bed is static and it is more usable compared to the A1 camera. Even the light is in the background, so it is not a perfect example, but even then you can see that this angle is not so good like with the P1P. Pretty completed, 1 hour and 28 minutes, very close to the estimate time in the slicer. P1P, it's finished, and the real printing time was... Oh, I cannot see it on this screen. But I can see it in the Bamboo Studio, and it was uh, 1 hour and 12 minutes, so really accurate, similar like with the slicer. Unfortunately, in Bamboo Handy, I cannot see this information. No, I cannot see any difference. See, this is the first layer. Next object is the Kali Dragon, and it looks like very slow printing because the speed is limited because of the minimal layer printing time. The quality is very similar, I cannot see any difference between them. The 
this is gear bearing and here the accuracy of the printer is important otherwise these gears may stick together I already saw that earlier and in that case they will not rotate this is just a small storage box and I inserted a filament change too and here the printing time is very similar because the acceleration here is not so important and the speed is very similar. Same quality in both cases, absolutely no ghosting. Is it better now? <laughs> but I need much more boxes. And it's time to do some color printing and here I have four pieces of this object because the material usage will be more optimum if I spread more objects along the X and Y axis. More about this optimal material usage when we do some color printing you can see in my A1 mini review. I also measure the color change time from white to green which is shorter compared to the opposite. And on A1 it was 1 minute and uh, 39 seconds. And this is P1P, same from white to blue, in this case uh, 1 minute and 49 seconds, a little bit slower. But the print quality in both cases is fantastic, so no question about that, the colors are very clean. But there is a small problem, and that's the waste material. In both cases uh, quite a lot and also I measured the waste material so you can see the useful weight of the objects 28 grams total and look at this this is the waste material on A1 and this is on P1P a little bit more interesting and if you want the optimal material usage try to separate those objects in the different color as you can see this is printed on two different printers in two different colors. Of course in most cases this is not possible but if yes it's good to know about it. And after we combine these two objects <laughs> we have the color printing. Total printing time was three and a half hours but if I would print this in two colors in that case it would take 18 hours and also the waste material would be three times bigger. This will be a very long printing more than 10 hours and it will use almost one third of the spool and most of the time I will not even be here, but I will supervise it over my smartphone. I'm home, <laughs> printing is at 50% and 5 more hours. And this is what I can see over the app, so not really usable, just minimally to see if the printing is okay. But nothing more than that. Bebel PLA with the best layer adhesion, and it is discontinued. This is a tool, a holder for the sheet when I want to mount it to the steel plate, but more about it later when it's finished. So these are those new Bamboo Lab sheets and the problem is that I have four sheets, but only one steel plate, so only two I can test this. I will start a poll on my YouTube channel, so which two from these four you want me to test? This is just a summary of the numbers. Let's check the print times. This is in minutes and in most cases the P1P was faster except in two examples. The Kali Dragon, here the difference was not too big because the speed was limited with the minimal layer printing time. And with the box, uh, here actually the acceleration was not so important but the speed and the speed is equal in both cases. Uh, some other numbers here, for example the noise, the A1 is much quieter, this is very important parameter for me and it has nice touch screen. The AMS is enclosed on P1P, this is advantage if you want print and storage PTG material. Carbon spools, they can be used with A1 and AMS light. The color change time was slightly shorter on A1. And if you watch the price, uh, currently there is some big discount, so the price is very similar, not much cheaper is the A1. Quick conclusions for the end. No question about that, that this is the best best thing I tested so far. Will it replace my P1P for PLA printing? Well, not really, but it will get very special place. I will bring it with me to my workplace in my office because it is a very quiet machine and it will replace their two industries. In the same time, it can do the same job. Now those NZ3s has one advantage compared to this printer, 
and that's that can teach better the students about 3D printing. Take a lot on those industries, how can they level the knobs, set the Z offset, level the bed and similar. But I'm not sure that this is the future of the 3D printing. I mean, this should be the future when you take out from the box the printer, maybe do some minimal assembling, do some automatic calibration, and it is ready for printing. Now, that will be it for my side. Thank you for watching and happy printing.